The rift between the Chief of Staff, Abba Kiari, and the National Security Advisor, Babagana Monguno, has got puppetries in sight. And so the men that raped women, killed children, maimed people, burned houses and took away people's livelihood are going to get a second chance, an opportunity to be educated. This is Plus Politics and I am Benny Ark. Now the battle between the Chief of Staff, Abba Kiari, and the National Security Advisor, Baba Gana Monguno, seems to have shifted gears as the Chief of Army Staff, Toko Baratai, appears to have taken sides with Kiari. This is as Baratai ordered the immediate withdrawal of top Army officers attached to the Office of the National Security Advisor, ONSA, and have moved from the facility, leaving the facility without any Army protection. This is according to security sources. And joining us in Plus Politics this evening to discuss this at length is political analyst Babashola Adegui. Thank you for joining us on Good the show evening. this evening. And also we have legal practitioner Libros Oshoma. Thank you, sir, for joining us this evening. My pleasure. Now, let's start off this way. There has been a series of revelations since the NSA's leaked memo in the, in the public space. And since Tuesday, this happened. And with all its contests alleging that there is an undue interference by President Mahmoud Bari, COS, what is your reaction to all of this development? Let me start with you, sir. Yeah, um, first and foremost, um, we all know that the office of um, the chief of staff is alien to our constitution. Yes. And um, it was a creation of the military, if you remember, during the military era, you have uh, the chief of staff, uh, Supreme Headquarters, uh, who also doubles most times as the deputy president or yes. the vice head of state. And then um, also in the American constitution, uh, the chief of staff is like the clearing house, you know, of the presidents, yes. you know, all memos and um, political appointments, appointments. Yes. And, um, you know, he's the, he, he, he's the head of admin in the presidency. And so it's a very powerful office. Yes. And then if you have um, somebody who is um, also very, very powerful, in, holds that office, you know, he's going to ride rough showed, you know, on so many others. That's why, in all cases, the president had to be on top of his game, yes. had to, you know, rein everybody in. But in this case, the president had said, when everybody was accusing his chief of staff of, of being high handed, the president said, Look, well, um, now everybody that wants to see me or anything that everything that is that should come to me should come pass through. through the office of the yeah. chief of staff. So that's, if you remember in the last dispensation, some ministers even accuse, you know, the president of uh, um, their inability to relate with him. And so that, you know, made the chief of staff seems like the prime minister, de facto prime minister. Mm -hmm. and, and so you have somebody who knows how to weigh that power and is weighing the power. But I, I, that also is not too good for our democracy. Okay. Our policy is so okay, we'll come to that later. Yes, but Bashola, you want, you want to say something on this? Please? Well, in addition to what he, um, he has said, um, as a chief of staff, number one, it's not in the constitution. Number two, I doubt if the rules of the chief of staff is defined anywhere in the Nigerian government of the presidency. But what we know about the chief of staff is more or less like the chief planner, is the one that has the hairs to what is happening outside, think about it, plan, and present it to the chief uh, executive, that is the president. Yes. Present to the president for the president to do either say accepted or rejected, you get. So in this case now, where we have the chief of staff and the NSA having issues, it's as a result that the NSA sees security as its own responsibility and not that of the chief of staff, uh, chief of staff. Whereas the truth is, the chief of staff we are talking about has more power because <coughs> he is the engine, is the engine of the president. Nothing goes to the president without him. But there should be a leveled play role between the two of them, whereby when it comes to security, let the man in charge of the security be in charge. And the chief of, chief of staff, without any security background, for me, <laughs> you are playing the role you shouldn't play. Now, just yesterday, the BMO, the Buhari um, Media Organization, came out as a result of this um, leaked memo from the NSA to debunk the fact that, and they claim that Buhari is still in, in charge of critical affairs of the nation. Um, 
the NSC had alleged that there were meetings being presided over with the chiefs, uh, service chiefs, without the consent, without even the knowledge of the president. How well does this fare for our democracy and the seemingly security situations we're going through right now? Basically, like I said, what you see playing out here is the fact that um, you have um, an absentee president. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't shy away from, you, you know naming and shaming. The president is an absentee president and um, who blames everybody but himself mm. for any default. And so this is not the first time we have seen the squabbles and um, the, you know, skirmishes happen in the presidency. Okay. Remember, um, during the uh, Senate um, nomination and clearance of the EFCC acting chair, yeah. um, the DSS Very wrote much. a letter to um, the National Assembly, you know, um, on why the, the uh, uh, acting EFCC chair should not be cleared. And meanwhile, the DGDSS is a member of the board of the EFCC. FCC. You know, and so, and both of them report to the same presidency. One would have expected that, you know, that letter ought to be directed to the office of the president first before even getting to the Senate. And that letter didn't come once, it came twice. And heads didn't roll. It also show you know, lackadaisical attitude on the part of the president. And then, why ministers were complaining of their inability to assess the, the president, president. Yeah. you know, the president had to, he iced the cake by saying, you know what, anybody that wants to see me, you go to, through the um, office yeah. of the and chief And just of to staff. chip in there, this was the same Abba Kiari also, the president's wife did complain about also that as yeah. I jacked. <laughs> yeah, the, and, the, 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 yes. and I'm so, ordinarily the chief of staff is to be seen and not heard. Being the clearing house of the president is like an admin head. And, and so, but you have the spokesperson who should be the voice of whatever comes out there. But what the role that the chief of staff is playing now is that role of Mr. President. He calls for meetings, even without you know, reference to people who are ordinarily supposed to be in charge of those sections. A situation where you're a natural, national security advisor yes. who ought to be advising the president on security matters, even if the advice should pass through the office of the chief of staff. But you hear that your president calls for a meeting without informing you. What it basically means is that a vote of no confidence has been passed on your office. And on if, the NSA's office? Yes, on the NSA's office. And so one would have expected that at, in Sena society, the NSA would throw in the towel and say, you know what, you are undermining my office. And, and so you're demeaning my office, the chief of staff. And by also raising such memo, and the memo even before it gets to the office of um, the uh, chief, of, chief staff, of staff, it's already in the public. Yeah. You, you know, it's so messy that I really don't see how they would you know, manage this. But typical of the Buhari administration, their media organization had come out to, to try to throw spanners and spin yeah. you, you know, the news. But no matter how much you try to spin this, it's messy. And um, it also goes to show that truly the president is absolutely not. In Interestingly, you did mention that the office of the NSA seems undermined by all of this development. Now, many people have figured the fact that there, there seems to be um, a deliberate systematic move in cutting the size of the NSA office. Do, do you share in this argument, in this sentiment? Yeah, I and just, for whatever given not reason. Just, not just the um, uh, um, NSA's office. If you notice what is playing out here, it's everybody trying to own their space. Yes. Um, when you have, like I said, and I will continually say it, when you have a president who's not in charge, everybody that seems to be superpower, like you had um, the superpower, uh, super pump sec during um, um, Jeremiah Mutala Mohammed's regime, the uh, Ali Sinayida, the Gamelia Nocedes of this world. Now also you have, you know, everybody trying to own their space. And the chief of staff is like the behemoth in the, in the room here. Mm. Uh, and so, Everybody defers to him. That's why you see the chief of army staff quickly, you know, aligning because he knows where his bread is buttered. Yes. And, and, and the office of the vice president was completely undermined and the heavens didn't fall. And so if that had happened and the heavens didn't fall, then the chief of staff would just be a small fry in this game. Um, they have undermined him. They've even deployed uh, army officers that are ordinarily supposed, statutorily, They've been withdrawn from supposed yes, to be to working yes. with him. And yet he still sits tight and is writing memos because here we don't resign. That, that, it's unfortunate. Baba, do you have anything to say to this? Like... Well, uh, well, not too much. Uh, uh, unfortunately, in this country, we are not, we, maybe we, we, don't, we don't have the orientation of um, resigning from our position 
whenever we discover that our responsibility or let me say voicelessly do you think he should resign i mean has, has, has it gone into that yet i mean he yes yeah the truth is if you're in the position you are not functioning what are you doing there someone that is already taking over your job your responsibility you are just there as a figurehead is that that two things you want to make names for yourself you want to make more money or you see it as opportunity to uh, for other or uh, those you get if you have become irresponsible and a vote of confidence have uh, passed on you voicelessly. You get my point? So it means you had not, the best thing for you is to take that resignation letter and tell them, wow, I think I have to leave now because I'm not having any impact in the government. Oh, there's been arguments in some certain quarters that the, the office of the COS hierarchically seem to be higher than that of the NSA because all political appointment of the president comes through the office of the COS. Do, do you think in any way that the, the COS, because of this, is far-reaching? And if indeed all political appointments of the president must come through the, the COS? What you I mean, basically have here yeah. is supposed to be understanding. Okay. We, they share, like he had said at the beginning, they share various roles. We all know that the chief of staff to the president is the head of administration in the presidency. Yes. Nobody is contesting that. And um, you also have an advisor. Why do you have advisors? It's, a nat it's the national security, security advisor. advisor. So when it comes to issues that has to do with security, security, national issues that has to do with security, it is mandatory that he must be consulted on such issues. Otherwise, if he's not consulted, what it means is that he has been identified as a saboteur or that his services are no longer required. Mm. It has nothing to do with hierarchy here. It's about, if we're talking about domestic affairs, you really don't need the national security advisors. You know, but when it has to do with holding meetings with service chiefs, and this is the, where we are at the height of insecurity all over, everywhere in the country. We are fighting wars on all fronts. If we're not fighting armed bandits, we're talking about killer headsmen, we're talking about kidnapping. Yeah. That even our army, as presently, we're fighting war in um, the Northeast. And so you're now discussing national security issues, and that involves the service chiefs who ought to work hand in hand, uh, uh, pari passu, with the national security advisor. And then you skim out the national security advisor, you call them for a meeting without even the courtesy of copying him on that meeting. What the only, the only signal message you are sending to that office is that that office of the advisor is not needed. It's no longer relevant. Yeah. And uh, that's basically what it is. All right, let's, go, let's come to um, more revolutions. It was said that the chief of army staff, Tuku Burate, ordered the immediate withdrawal of top army officers attached to the office of the National Security Advisor, the ONSA, earlier this morning. What does this give credence to? What does this indicate? What, what is this indicative of? Of course, like, as you <coughs> mentioned, that the chief of, uh, the chief of, army, chief of army staff, yes. that the COS, actually knows where he's getting his food from. He knows where to dance to. He has to make a choice. Chief of staff or head and say, which would I go with? Definitely the chief of army staff wouldn't have acted if there was no order from above for him to act in such manner. On a good day, if you are removing personnel who are supposed to be working with the security advisor, there should be replacements. Even for you to remove them, the NSA must be notified. Yeah, no without the knowledge of the NSA. You get my point. Must have been notified of removal, and definitely you must mention the replacements of those you are removing. But you totally removing about 14 or 15 personnel from the NSA office. It shows that you are telling the NSA man, Mr. Man, you are not relevant to me. I don't need you. I'm okay with the chief of staff. Uh, sorry, that. Uh, in, in another breath, they had argued that um, they are removing those people because of um, the leaked memo hmm. that they wanted um, in, in the course of investigating yeah. how the memo you know, got, got to leaked. the press. And, and so that uh, there was need you know, to, to remove um, some, some staffs who had overstayed. But in removing staffs, uh, like he, he has alleged, there's need to also immediately replace them. You don't just 
remove them and then and, and the withdrawal the and redeployment was with immediate effect even with like a threat to, for them to report to their new postings within three days yeah or, that that can be if 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 um, there's any out of truth in the fact that yeah. some staffs leaked that memo that can be a way of punishing those staffs to report, they do it in the army. Okay. If, for example, you are without the I, knowledge of they, the NSA, the, the NSA was not prior to this. If when all this was happening, it was even actually outside should, the country. It should be a collaborative okay. effort between the NSA, NSA. because these are people who are working with him. He should be in charge of the, his office. And um, if you're going to deploy anybody from that office, yes, it should be a collaborative effort between the NSA. Mind you, we're talking of a retired general also. Mm -hmm should be a collaborative effort between the NSA and, and the chief, chief of, of army staff. staff. But we, in the absence of that collaboration, the only inference any reasonable man can draw is the fact that, the, um, like you, you said in your news, the fact that the um, chief of army staff had taken side in this squabble yeah. between the NSA and um, the, uh, the chief, chief of staff to the president. Yeah. And it does not augur well for the administration. The administration that have been, you know, called every you know, printable names, and they've acted out those names. I expect that by now they should find a way of, you know, creating synergies, you know, a meeting ground for, you know, all warring parties. You've heard in some cases that there are cabals even in the presidency. You've heard in some cases the squabbles between um, um, Mama Daura and um, the president's uh, wife. Um, in some cases, it was so bad that the president had to say that he does not know the party that the wife belonged to because she seems to be very vociferous. She seems to be a critic within. And it is because of issues like this that, you know, are patent and patently playing out and everybody's watching that all seems not to be well with the men here because the man at the top of, you know, things is not fully in charge. Okay. Imagine an Obasanjo's presidency. Obasanjo would have reigned in a few, few persons. Yes. Even though he said at the point, I'm, I'm appointing you as advisors, but it's not compulsory that I take your advice. But that is, you know, somebody who is in charge, as bad as he was, but he was in charge of, of, of affairs. But here, it seems like you have an absentee president, yes. and so everybody wants to maintain their, their, their hold on the area, their domain where they control. And so you see conflict. And in all of these squabbles and conflict, the chief of staff, who the president has heard out as, you know, and the unwritten, a de facto prime minister, yes. seems to be having the upper hand. Uh, Babala, you want to react quickly to anything there, I mean? Well, um, all I would say is the president needs to be in charge. But unfortunately, we have well, been saying this. Well, he been, has not abdicated any duties, and he's still in control of critical well, affairs of the country. I mean... It's, it's, it's their word against what is going on. But I'm, I'm concerned right now. There seems to be a, a crisis at this moment between <laughs> the office of the CSO and that of the NSA. And now the chief of army, army staff has made it so clear and glaring to everybody what side he's pitching on. How does this all go well for our security architecture, Please. given the myriad of challenges, security challenges we're going through right now? You're pretending to be fighting insecurity. We just pretending to yes, be we're fighting. Pretending. We just romanticize it. You know, we fantasize about it. Mm -hmm. We technically defeat the Boko Haram. We maneuvering defeat them, and now we are finally defeating them. You know, and all of all of those. And if you also remember, you, let me take your mind back. You know, in, in not too long ago, yeah. you also you know hear of squabbles between in in the same presidency when the office of the vice president at a point when some staffs were ceremoniously immediately withdrawn from that office it was the same excuse that they gave that we were just trying to you know cut down mm. the spendings or the the office of the vice president because for lack of funds but when that happened the office of the president we saw that you know they had more hands they employed more hands you had more special advisors you know and and and, and what's not so what it basically mean even the function the only function that the vice president was performing sharing money in markets was taken away and given to uh, the Minister of uh, Humanitarian Affairs. And that woman said, you know, I can't demean myself to be sharing money. And now you have a, pres a vice president who's almost redundant on this, even though um, some person still believes that he, you know, he's working behind the scene. Yeah. And then you have a president who almost performs ceremonial duties 
it's instead of paying courtesy visits or sending, you know, a vice president, vice president or a delegate to pay courtesy visits, one would have expected that as we speak now that we have a strategic plan on dealing with insurgency, yes. on dealing with national security issues. The, the creation of Amoteco is um, it's, it's, um, a sign and a signal to say that, look, we no longer have faith in the way the federal government is dealing with insecurity. Yeah. And so that also is a pointer to the fact that we are not fighting insecurity. And a situation, sorry to round up on yeah. this, a situation where also, do you know how bad it feels as an army, uh, 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 a combatant in the war front, to be confronted twice by the same set of people you have arrested and handed over to, to uh, the authority, only for them to be back all in the name of rehabilitation. And General Bacha once said that when insurgency lasts more than 48 hours, then you know that government is involved. Right, Mongono has alleged that um, Boratai's stand with what he's come out to do is kind of forming alliance with, um, with Kiari and that this totally undermines the fight against insurgency. And so despite public outcry and resolution by both chambers of the National Assembly calling for the sacking of the service chiefs, that this undermines the call for that. Do you agree? Um, yes, I agree on the first uh, uh, value. value. Yes, I agree, uh, but it's deeper, much more deeper than is, that. Is this more personal or political in, in its in It's all about personal. It's okay. not um, it's personal. And personal for political gains. Mm. You know, it's much deeper than just um, you know, because you have to look for a a, a brand for it so that it will be sellable. Yes. And that's why you uh, at the end of the day you just attach, you know, the fight against Boko Haram. Right. You know, to it, so it, it's sellable. Or that this is undermining my office, and then the, the gains we have made so far, or the gains that this government has made. It's an advisor. He is to advise on national security issues. Mm -hmm. The chief of army staff's office has his own role yes. to play, you know, in combating these issues. And then the chief of staff to the president also has his own role as a clearing how to coordinate all of these activities. Mm -hmm. And so the moment one office is undermined, what it means is that it's irrelevant. And so I do not expect him to sit, sit down there and begin to romanticize and fantasize about how his office has been undermined. Be. The only way he can speak loud about that is to say, you know what, it seems my services are no longer needed. And, and so I will horribly, honorably, you know, um, uh, thank Mr. Yeah. President for the time to, to serve. So sir, and, and then and leave. And exit the office. The, the cry for the sacking of the service chiefs. What, what's your reaction to that, Balashola? Actually, I want to say correlation between the sack, between the cry of the sack, for the sack of the service chiefs and what is happening between the NSA and the chief of staff. Because uh, this cry actually came up towards the end of January and now it shows that the NSA is trying to say no, we would have done better if not for the chief of staff. Who interference, has, he alleged an well, interference by the members. Exactly. Yes. So if he has not done that, then we would have won. Okay, no problem. Let me take care of this thing. Chief of staff, stay aside. Let me face. And the show of staff is like, no, I'm not ready for this. I want to be part of this. And unfortunately, from what I read in the newspaper yesterday, we learned that chief of staff even overrides the president's directive. So it shows a lot of things. The about prime minister. <laughs> Again, I always go back. The BMO has come to rebut that. That there's no such thing happening. It's what, the BMO. What, what, do, what do you expect yeah. the BMO to say? To, we don't need to to. They can issue statements yes. for, for as long as they want to. Um, whether we listen or we are not fools. We all see these we things see happening. We see it, we feel it, we know it. It is happening, it is in our faces. And, and so they are, they are being paid to, to issue statements. And, and so they are just basically doing what they are being paid for. And then on the issue of um, whether the gains on Boko Haram or not, yes. we are all, these things are obvious and very, very visible, even to the blind and audible to the deaf, that there are no gains anywhere. And, and so, what has the undermining, I would rather even see it from the point of view of the fact that the chief of staff failed, that look, these people have been too, they, for the fact, for as long as the Office of the National Security Advisor had been managing this affair, that there are no gains. And, and so, for the first time, he would want to leapfrog above that office, yes. interface directly with the service chiefs, and probably charge them 
to maybe move into the theater of, of where the action is so maybe we can get results. And that's why I consistently say that that means that there is the, it's a, a big vote of no confidence on the oh, Office no, of National no, Security no, Advisor. No, and, and now we shouldn't be talking about oh, we would have gained, uh, gained more ground. And then people also, including some people in the army, had said the service chiefs had, had lived their youthfulness. It, in terms of uh, retirement age, yes. they have way past their retirement age. And there is no provision in this constitution, yeah, especially section 217 of the constitution, section 218, that empowers the president to extend, extend their retirement age. If they were still within retirement, then you can extend their tenure by giving them another appointment. Even the Office of the National Security Advisor, right from president, ought to renew his appointment. His appointment had not been renewed. Okay. The service chiefs also, the appointment had not been renewed. So when we now begin to talk about extending tenure, under which, which law are we extending the tenure for people who are supposed to have been in retirement? Liberal Shoma, legal practitioner, and Baba Shola Adegbo, you political analyst, thank you for your contribution in this segment. My and pleasure. thank you for staying with us. The supporters and critics of the Boko Haram education bill and the reason is up next for discussion. Do stay with us.